So the network is really growing to meet diaper need, and we saw a lot about this in some of the earlier presentations. We know that 5.3 million infants and toddlers live in four or low income families, and while we are meeting a tremendous amount of need of 400,000 children, we know that we have a way to go. So what can we do to actually help help bridge that diaper need gap? Like how I did that? Nice. Mm -hmm. um, so again, our mission is to grow the network, help new members grow, help them meet more of the needs in the community, and help them have a greater impact by meeting those needs, and how diapers are a part of that. So right now we do spend a lot of time, you know, counting diapers. What do we distribute? How many diapers do we distribute every month, every year? How many agencies are our partners? Um, how many individuals are served? How many families are served? And we are measuring a lot of outputs. And that's really great. We can show, we can just show, show the sheer volume, the sheer mass of the work that we're doing. Um, and we're really excited about that. And what we want to do um, to add on to this great work is actually think about our focus in outcomes as opposed to outputs. And so we're going to use some language uh, that might be maybe newer to some diaper banks in terms of outcome language. Um, and so in terms of measuring success, we can measure the impact of the diapers better with outcomes. So because of diaper banks, uh, and these are just some examples of what some outcome measures could potentially be. Because of diaper banks, babies have a lower incidence of diaper rash, or their ability to access childcare has increased. They can stay in shelter with their family. Um, they are more likely to attend their well baby visits. So there are a number of different categories of which we can think about what outcomes could be. And that work is still yet to be done, but these are just some examples for folks to have an understanding of what we're talking about. And if you had the privilege of going to the um, session that Michelle Old from the Denver Bank of North Carolina did, then you are a pro at this, because <laughs> she did such a great job at talking about outcomes and why it matters. Um, and, and I know that that presentation will be available for folks um, in some fashion after the conference. So I did want to take a moment to say that uh, this work is really your collective work. This is a list of the number of identifying the folks who were actually involved in the task forces that actually helped put together what we're thinking about in terms of growth of the network and growth to meet need. And I would actually ask, I'm not going to name everyone, but I would ask if you participated in a task force to please stand up and be acknowledged and recognize that these are folks from all different types of diaper banks, all different types of diaper programs, pantries, organizations, and collaborations. We were intentional and purposeful in who participated in this to make sure that we had great representation from all different types of folks who are meeting diaper need in their community. So I would really ask if there are folks here to stand up, please, and be recognized for this tremendous amount of work. And I would be remiss um, to not acknowledge the tremendous amount of work that uh, NDBN staff, in particular Susan Van Ness, put into this. The conference calls, the emails, the surveys, all of the ways in which we collected information from you, feedback from you, input from you, because we know how important it is for this to be built by you. So thank you so much for that. And yes, there were seven versions of this. And at one point, I think we were like at eight pages, and we now are. So anyway, it is streamlined, it is great, and we're going to get to it in a little bit. But it was really important to be intentional about this part. And this is just sort of a, a framework for um, sort of categories of membership that we will really be delving into in detail a little bit further on in the presentation. We didn't want to give it all away too soon, but we wanted to just show you sort of this is what we're thinking about. These are some of the broad categories um, that folks told us that they really wanted targeted resources on based on their size and on the type of program that they are.
And yes, we will all work together. We already are working together, and we're going to do it even more. Um, this is about targeting resources and support to the specific needs of the National Decor Bank Network community. And how can NDBN help support you uh, to make that happen, to really focus the efforts um, of staff, of resources, on what you all need as a network member. And focus on helping new members and still be able to bring on new folks. I call this the Girl Scout. Anyone, any Girl Scouts in here? Yeah, yeah make new friends, we keep the old. <laughs> this is the make new friends, we keep the old. One is silver and the other is gold. That is our Girl Scout moment. Um, and that, you know, all this work went into sort of us presenting what the network is looking for in terms of needs, implementing it will take time. This is not a scary moment. This is a this is an awesome moment for us to think about the network and its value and the members of the network. So it's going to take time to implement some of the changes that we think that you asked for. So when did this work begin? So really, this work has been going on since the inception of the network. However, officially, under this um, framework, um, we, it started in July of 2015 at the Standard Summit. Who was the, can I get a raise of hands for folks who have participated in that? Awesome. So some of you were there. Um, it was a lovely and intense um, <laughs> experience. It was at a lovely place, but it didn't stop us from working. And if you know, you know from attending these conferences, we work, yeah, we work, yeah. So um, it was a great process, and there was so much input, and then uh, continued with the Seattle conference last year, so folks who were there, um, we furthered the discussion. We started the task force and working groups and trying to figure out what is the best way to collect information, practice, what do folks want help with resources with. Um, and then the three task forces were formed. Um, exploring the options for a new member network model, what are the best practices, both in terms of diaper banking, but in terms of nonprofits and where can we get resources to target to that. And then what are the common practices? And then what are the really distinctions that make this network really unique because we do value all of the different members? And what we found from surveying our members, from getting all this input from the task forces, one size does not fit all. I would love to be a size six, like I was when I was 12. <laughs> However, my needs as a 47-year-old woman are a little different, and I want my pants to fit. So, <laughs> national associations are most helpful when they provide the right service uh, to the right members at the right time. And, and, and to be in, of course, is extremely diverse and we want to make sure that we find a way to target the services that meet your needs. And make sure that we cover all the bases is one of the other findings. So um, what are the commonalities? What are the things that um, we all do that make us stronger, that make us speak with one voice as a network? Um, and then identifying that we know that these four things, based on your input, are what successful organizations need to perform well. And so we have four terms here, um, governance, again, the leadership of your organization, participation, that category is really looking at um, the op operationalizing what you're doing. Um, what are the key practices? Uh, how do you work with partner agencies or how do you collaborate? Fundraising and all financial matters, so we know how important that is, both for the sustainability of your organization, but to make sure that you have appropriate practices, and advocacy. Um, what other resources can we provide to help you strengthen your advocacy both um, at your local community level and then how can you participate in the national discussion around that as a diaper banker? And finding number three, keep learning. How many people here learned something new this for the, over the past couple days? Right. So every year when I come to this conference, I say, I have learned at least 15 new things that I'm going to try and implement next week at <laughs> I see my staff remember when they were saying, oh my god. Um, but that really, and that's just one example, of one opportunity that the network offers where we have the ability to keep learning. And then think about the breadth and the depth of services that the network provides. 
we and we know as a network we need to be adaptable and flexible to meet the needs of the communities that we're serving and the way that we do that is by keeping learning so our goal is to increase your capacity uh, on every level um, and that every member again has a place in our network it makes it so much better and there's opportunities for every organization to grow in what way they feel is appropriate to help them meet the need in their community and that collectively we know this we have a wealth of experience and we really do a great job of reaching out to other folks who say oh I love what you do with your diaper drive uh, can I call you for a conversation we're really good at that and there are so many mechanisms that the network offers that allow us to do that and we're going to do even more and part two it is now time for Jill right of the Deborah Beck of the Ozarks to take over I'm Jill. Um, I'm with the Little Diaper Bank in the Ozarks. Um, we're out there in the boonies. Um, but it has been an amazing privilege to work on this task force. Uh, I will admit, when I went in July um, last year to Connecticut, it was a beautiful house and it was an amazing meeting. But quite honestly, I didn't even know what a benchmark was. I had never heard of best practices. I went to school, um, nurses school in the Royal Air Force. I did on the job training, I did no college, I have no college, so these terms meant nothing to me, I had no idea what I was in for, but it's been an amazing experience and I've learned so much and I know you guys will all appreciate all of the work that's been put into this to, to come up with what we have. <laughs> okay, um, first of all, this, this whole process, this whole tool is going to match the services that the uh, National, Di Na National Diaper Bank Network provides to us with um, the level of agency, the level of um, diaper bank that we are in our community at this point. They will give us the resources that we need to grow. And again, one size does not fit all. I think at this point we're all pretty much aware of the different types of members um, that we have in our network, but basically a diaper bank gives their diapers out through agencies, a diaper pantry does more of a direct service model, and diaper programs are a, not necessarily smaller, but a small part of a bigger program. Again, as Janet said, we will be covering all the bases. Um, when we were working in very early stages, we looked at several of the um, best practices um, of other nonprofit uh, organizations, big ones, and we actually came out with about seven different levels, but we combined them into four, and we felt that that covered everything we needed to know. So we talked about benchmarks. Benchmarks are signs of achievement. They are not rules. They're voluntary for all members. You can choose exactly where you want to be, exactly where you want to stay. They're demonstrated knowledge, planning, and activity. And together, the member profile, profiles point the network towards new goals. We came up with four levels. I think if I could use an analogy, I would use the analogy of building yourself an amazing home. The first part is the exploring member. At this point, you're looking for the plan. You're looking everywhere, you're getting your blueprints, and you're deciding exactly what your house is going to look like, where it's going to be, and how you're going to build it. Um, with our emerging member, uh, our exploring members, they're new in the community, they're just kind of looking around to see, is somebody else meeting this need? Is this need needed in my city, my rural area? The next level is our emerging member. And this part I compare to the foundation of the home. And it takes a long time. In Missouri, where we have tornadoes, we build a basement. And so it takes an even longer time to dig out that basement and lay the foundation. Sustaining members, we're now building our house. We're seeing wonderful results. Um, we're able to expand and replicate programs while we're continuing our existing services. And change leader.
for us now, we're all starting as exploring members. And we're looking forward to, at some point, becoming change leaders. We will aspire to be change leaders. A lot of us, um, we're five years old as a national network. A lot of our diaper banks will soon come to a point where founding executive directors will be moving on, retiring maybe, <laughs> and um, somebody else will be coming in their place. That's a hard, hard step to take for any nonprofit organization, any organization that's young. And so Change Leader will help us prepare for that event to take place, help us ensure that we succeed when that actually comes to happen. The print's really small here. This is, this is the big, big reveal. This is our baby being born. This is us seeing it for the first time. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> <laughs> it is amazing. Um, the first thing that I thought when I saw this was, oh my goodness, strategic planning is going to be a breeze. Um, you look at this um, and it's like, it's all written out right there for me. Uh, I just have to kind of put the little figures in that make us get to this place. Um, don't spend a lot of time right now looking at where am I, but just let's look at a couple of the levels and um, if I can move over. Let's look um, under the partici participation um, in the exploring members. We have dedicated storage space. We know that with a lot of our exploring members, that's still the basement, the dining room in our homes. And that's fine. That's where we start. It may be the trunk of our car. If we move across to the emerging member level, we're now owning or leasing or having access to a non-residential storage site. Again, we move across to the sustaining member. We're owning or leasing warehouse facility with a loading dock. And change leader, warehouse and infrastructure supports, be, supports a region with a storehouse maybe for the entire region. When we look at these levels, we will find that many of us, this first time when we take our survey, will not fit into a specific column. We'll kind of be all over the map. We may find some people that are even still, at some point, in an exploring member level, maybe have several points in the emerging member level, but maybe also have some points in the sustaining member. So, Again, I say, this is an amazing tool that you can use to make sure that you set out your plans correctly, that you have a strong, strong foundation, that you spend a lot of time in those earlier two levels, exploring, emerging, and then eventually you will reach the sustaining member level. If you choose to reach it, you may be quite happy and your community may be quite well satisfied with you staying in these other levels, exploring or emerging. But if you choose to, you can aspire to become change leader. What's in it for me? What have I lost? No, 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 um, a lot of people here today, and they've been here for a couple of days, waiting for us to tell us, quite honestly, when am I going to get my first Huggies truck? It's always the big question of the conference, and two years ago, I was sitting here thinking, when am I going to get my first Huggies truck? We're a little diaper bank in the Ozarks, it's nowhere near a big city. Trucks don't go that way. Um, you know, I could come up with a lot of reasons why I wasn't getting my Huggies truck. Um, at the almost the end of our third year, um, I got a call from Diamond, uh, Dark Bank Network that my truck was coming. 
Um, it was the best day of my life. But we won't tell your kids. <laughs> <laughs> but at that point, I was ready. Um, I I'd set the foundation. I knew what the community needed. I knew where the diapers would be going. I knew how to get them there. I had the loading dock. I had steady warehouse facility that wasn't going to disappear next week. Um, I was ready, and the diaper bank network knew that. I think the concern at the time was I didn't know. And so this member model is going to show you exactly where you are and what services the National Diaper Bank Network has to offer you at the level you're at. Receiving a Huggies truck is amazing. Maybe not the most amazing day of my life. But, <laughs> but when, when the truck empties out into your warehouse, you didn't put the order in. I'm not negating anything that comes from Huggies, but when you get a truck that's full of size one, two, and three, you have to know that we only give out about 5% size one, 5% size two, and 5% size three. We have to know that we can get hold of, either through our diaper drives or the money that we are raising, to purchase 40% more size fours and 40% more size fives to go along with those ones, twos, and threes. We can't just say, I have a lot of size ones, twos, and threes, they'll last me for the next five years. That's not the way of the program. So we do need to be ready, and this, this type of membership is going to set you up to have the strong, strong foundation that you need to be ready for whatever services the National Diaper Bank Network is able to offer to you. We will be connecting services to your level of membership. I think I did it. So Janet was pregnant and Jill birthed us and I'm here to breastfeed all of you. <laughs> Some of you know I have an eight-month-old, so every time last night when they had the babies on the video, it was actually killing me. <laughs> it's weird having you all be dark. Are you all excited about this? Yeah. I am so excited about this. As a diaper bank that is entering our sixth year, this, for me, as a new diaper bank, would have been gold. It would have been gold. Because the reality is a lot of us are trying to figure out, how do we do this? And what I did, what a lot of us do, is we look to the diaper bank that is bigger than us, and we go knock on their door and we say, hey, please, could you help us? We call Joanne, we call Susan, we say, hey, please, could you help us? And what is their response always? Yes. yes, yes, I can help. Who in here has called another diaper bank? Who in here has called the National Diaper Bank and said, help, right? We are using this network and we're using these, these resources, and what we're really doing here is we are trying to make sure the resources that we are putting time and energy into are the ones the network needs, are the ones that are gonna help us go the furthest and help the most children. When I think about this um, and this presentation, I go back to what Jessica was talking about in deep poverty. We all wanna build organizations that work in our communities, that grow strong in our communities and serve the kids that we know need to be served. And this is how we get there. So I am, I'm, I'm so excited about it. So on to the breastfeeding. Okay, so my role here on part three is to tell you what happens next. Because how many of you right now are like, eh. there's gonna be some additional information on that annual survey about profile matching. So we're gonna get the stuff in November, we're gonna cull through it, we're gonna see what other questions we need to ask to really see where, where folks fit. In February, Susan is going to be working like a mad woman, and uh, she's going to do the interim profile matching. And we're going to really kind of test this out. So if we look at this, and we, we all, the, all the stuff comes back in, and we've got folks in emerging members, but one point doesn't fit, everybody isn't doing this one point, that means we need to look at this, this matrix again and say, hey, maybe we missed something. Maybe we need to change it a little bit. And then in March of 2017, see how it's in bold? feedback and review. You know what that is? That's all of you, okay? That is you taking up this mantle and saying, it's time for us to dive in. We're gonna be looking for a new task force on this. We're gonna be looking for new people to get involved in this. Um, 
And we're going to be, be asking some hard questions. So we want you to be part of that. Also in March, we're looking at a new member, member portal. And this is an online uh, repository of information. It's a way for you to update your benchmarks, let us know what's happening. Uh, it's also, we're hoping, a way for us to share information. The thing I hear over and over again at this conference is, let's not reinvent the wheel. Let's not reinvent the wheel. We have organizations who've been doing this for a little while and doing it very, very well. And we're all able to learn from each other. So let's take that and let's formalize it a little bit um, and, and make this process even easier for the new banks that are coming in, for the new programs that are starting. So I think our goal is really to support each other in this work. Um, I am always floored by how generous people are with their time and their resources and their energy. Um, I think it speaks to the work that we're all doing, and I think it speaks to the commitment of everybody in this network to make sure that our kids do thrive, and that we are organizations that are allowing and helping those kids thrive, and we want to be there for each other. So, go diving slightly deeper. Uh, the member survey, the, for the member survey, this chart is very abbreviated. Um, it was eight pages at one point. <laughs> and there's a, there's a lot more detail behind this. So there's a lot of stuff um, that we're going to share as we're, we're going down this process here. They're going to help us, um, survey responses will help us identify those misaligned benchmarks and will allow us to tweak it if we need to a little bit. And then online resources. I guess I already did that slide, didn't I? Okay. So going forward, most diaper banks are aiming to serve more children. That's not true of every single program, but that is true for most of the programs in this room. And we want to help you get there. And it's about finding the, the right support and the right resources that are really going to get you there. Uh, and I think that one thing to keep in mind is that this is going to take some time. And it is not going to be this linear line that goes like this. It's going to be this beautiful, organic, loopy thing that goes in lots of different directions. And we want, we want you on that journey. We want you on that loopy line with you. Thank you for the task force, to the task force for, for all the work that they did. Again, are you all excited about this? 